Last week you were treated to a lecture by Professor Ron Moore on political correctness, so this week I thought I might tell you a little more about this illustrious man. Professor Ron Moore is the Florence Foster Jenkins of the lecturing circuit. For those of you who do not know Florence Foster Jenkins, she was a rich American lady suffering under the delusion she could sing. She was a would-be soprano who tackled opera and lost. Florence was most famous in the 30s and 40s for her hideous renditions of all the famous operatic solos. Miss Jenkins had little sense of pitch and rhythm, sang mainly out of tune and was incapable of sustaining a note. Whilst Florence was convinced she was a brilliant singer, her audience thronged to her performances to laugh at her efforts. If you want proof of her ineptness, go to www.youtube.com and type Florence Foster Jenkins in the search box. But not before you have listened to this talk. Likewise, Professor Ron Moore is another equally deluded mortal who is similarly misguided and convinced of his own brilliance. Here is an extract from a lecture entitled The Life and Times of Professor Ron Moore, given by the deluded professor himself. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Ron Moore. Hello, allow me to introduce myself. I am Professor Ron Moore. That is not my real name, you understand. I just profess to be Ron Moore. Let me tell you a little about myself. I served my apprenticeship at the School of Hard Knocks and completed my education with a degree at the University of Life. It was a steep learning curve, but in time I learned how to be road wise but avoid street rage. Or should that be the other way round? <laughs> anyway, I managed to cope with anything life could throw at me. After a period of diligent study, I received a doctorate in the indefinable and thus excelled in obtruseness. <laughs> I am proud to say I am known by all that cross my path as being the most accredited, incompetent person they have ever met. Yes, praise indeed. Many people actually tell me they have never experienced such superficial, inane vacuousness in their life. Which makes me feel truly humbled. <laughs> because of these recognisable assets, I have devoted my life to the education of others through my lively lectures on a wide variety of subjects. To my mind, there is nothing more satisfying than delivering a lecture to an appreciative audience. What could be better than after giving a lecture to a riveted audience on how to make your own stale bread to experience the feedback from that grateful audience? It makes me proud of my profession when after a lecture the audience start stamping their feet, clap slowly in unison and scream for an encore. Yes, when I hear their cries of moron, moron, moron. <laughs> It brings a lump to my throat. It is true to say my audience and I are one. We are simpatico. I remember during one particularly successful talk on thrift and economy, I was just about to commence a dissertation on making soup from stale vegetables when they forestalled me, showing their empathy by showering the stage with a selection of mouldy cabbage, decomposing lettuce, rubber carrots and squashed tomatoes. <laughs> I was touched that so many of my audience had taken the trouble to read my advanced publicity and gone out of their way to bring their own vegetables. Surely they didn't expect me to rustle up a culinary delight there and then on stage. The evening was somewhat marred, however, by one or two who threw eggs. I'm not sure why they thought I might use eggs in a vegetable soup, but at least the thought was there. 
However, I was later heard to observe these fans had obviously not thought the matter through. Surely they should have realised that eggs lobbed onto the stage are certain to break, particularly taking into consideration the speed with which some of my more excited fans offered their eggs to me. <laughs> Unfortunately, some of those offering vegetables were also a little exuberant to say the least and jettisoned their offerings with considerable force. Some of which hit me. <laughs> but I took it all in good stead and when all is said and done, the injuries sustained soon healed. <laughs> Although you wouldn't think a stick of limp celery could inflict such severe lacerations. However, my motto is never say die. It is my unswerving intent to continue with my chosen vocation because I was born to teach the world. My lecture on how to hop on both feet simultaneously received rave reviews. One newspaper in its editorial asked how I managed to attract so many people to my lectures. It posed the question, were they only there for a good laugh? Well, I must admit, most of my lectures are mirth-driven, but I put that down to my natural comedic ability. <laughs> On another occasion, a second newspaper asked why it was necessary and, and who on earth would want to learn how to peel a potato with one hand tied behind your back. What was the purpose, they asked? Well, my answer to that is you would soon appreciate the benefits of this tutorial if you suddenly found yourself with one hand tied behind your back. <laughs> Critics claim I don't deserve my success. I assume these remarks come from my rivals. All the time they harbour this envy, they can never hope to attain the dizzy heights of success that I enjoy. So I lay down a challenge. I say, come and listen to me. And having endured one of my lectures, I know you will leave saying, I've never heard anything like that in my life. <laughs> There you had it. Look at radio's answer to Professor Albert Einstein. I give you Professor Ron Moore. More, Ron Moore, Ron Moore, Ron Moore.